Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Chappie. It's a film about an armed force robot who winds up having a mind of a child who is later being teached by local gangsters by taught them how to kill, to steal, and all this other stuff. It stars Charlotte Copley from the film District 9 and Elysium, Dave Patel from Slumdog Millionaire, Ninja and Yolandi Basir from a rap group from South Africa called Die Anta Wood, Jose Pablo Cantillo, Sigourney Weaver, Hugh Jackman, and Brandon Alretz. And it's written and directed by Neil Blomkamp, you know, who's been best known for his film debut in District 9, along with Elysium. And this is, of course, his third film so far this year. The movie begins set in the futuristic world of Johannesburg, South Africa. The government decided to purchase a squadron of state-of-the-art attack robots for the police force that's taken directly from a weapons manufacturer, Tichaba, which is developed by a young inventor named Dion Wilson, who's played by Dave Patel. Yeah, due to all these higher crime rates involving all the gangsters around the city, you know, going around looting, killing, and and stealing a lot of crap that's going around. But that also leads to a soldier turned engineer who's also the villain of the film named Vincent Moore, who's played by Hugh Jackman, who wants to having a competing project that's called the remotely controlled Moose, which is um, very similar to the Ed 209 robot that they use in the movie Robocop. Yeah. Suddenly Dion was very praised by his success over there, which makes Vincent completely jealous because they, they were willing to give his heavy weapons uh, platform the attention he deserved. But at home, Dion wants up creating a prototype artificial intelligence that mimics the human mind with feeling emotions and having opinions of their own. But of course, the CEO, Michelle Bradley, who's played by Sigoni Reaver, have refused to let him test it on a police robot. So at this rate, he decided to steal a, a damaged robot that's already planning to be destroyed and wants to put it in his van along with the guard key that he needs to update the robot software. So on his way home he was being kidnapped by a group of gangsters named Ninja Yolanti as well as America They're both played by Dire Anta Woods a group yeah also Ninja Yolanti and America was played by Jose Pablo Cantillo. Anyway, they were threatening to kill him unless they were reprogramming the, the police robot just to fight for them. So he winds up installing the new software into the damaged robot who winds up responding like a child. Yeah, already learning you know, how to say all these names and everything. And of course, Yolanti winds up naming the, the robot Chappy. Yeah, sort of like, <laughs> you know, like it's a short word for chapstick or something. Despite of that, Dion wanted to stay with the robot just to see how it goes, but Ninja forced him out of their hideout. So at this rate, the Ninja's game wound up um, only having a, a couple days just to uh, to pay the death of 20 million to to a powerful gangster named Hippo, who was played by. Brandon a rat. So Yolanti wants up seeing Chappie as basically a child and she wants up becoming a mother towards it. So yeah, she wants to mother him and actually teach him how to do all this stuff. But of course Ninja wants up growing very impatient and actually wants up teaching him how to use a gun, you know, how to shoot and and steal and, and all this other crap that, that the robot had to do. Yeah, such as stealing cars and and all this other 
other equipments that that they have already packaged once they pay all the money and everything. Yeah, including stealing all these boxes of of PS4s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which was later on by the way. But during his first attempt, that's where everything goes completely wrong when when a bunch of gangsters wants up uh, throwing all the stuff and actually threw uh, fire at him. Yeah, he, which he wants a burning, and he was yeah, he was so frightened he actually ran away as fast as he could until suddenly Vincent wants a you know picking Chappie up and and actually cut off his arm and took out the guard key that's in the back. But another problem is that. Chappie's irreplaceable battery was starting to run out, which only gives him days to live. You know, after ninjas decided to train Chappie as a gangster, you know, all this time, Vincent wants up using the guard key to upload a virus by shutting down all the police robots, including Chappie. So all the criminals at Johannesburg immediately started riding in the streets. And Dion brings Chappie to the Travel factory to fix them, but after being restarted, Chappie actually noticed that, that the helmet that was used to control the moose wants up actually using to actually control the mine so see if, if maybe this will work. So that, that's when they hook the, the helmet up to, to the, um, the PS4 so it gives you all the information we need. But yeah, but then of course things got even much worse when, when Vincent wants up going after um, Dion and, and the rest by trying out the moose and actually uh, going into their hideout and start attacking them which leads to to only a few of them getting killed which Lanti wants up sacrificing herself trying to save uh, Chappie and and of course uh, Dion from from Moose by detonating a bomb that's on inside so of course Chappie wants up driving Dion to the factory to actually uh, to find a way to transfer all all of Dion's consciousness into the spare robot which which is used for a test by using the moose helmet and once Chappie battery dies um, Dion now becomes a robot that wirelessly transfers to Chappie's consciousness and wants up you know using all the consciousness to another robot so See if maybe this will work. So now they become, as we speak, you know, robots. So now they they find a better way to actually use the the fresh drive to actually restore the Galante's uh, consciousness. So that that means now she'll be able to have a mind of a <laughs> of another robot, j just like the two of them. Yeah, and then and then the movie ends, which I gotta say. This this was just fucking ridiculous, and, and it was really dumb, lame, clunky, and very excusable. But at times like that, the film does get a bit of tweaking, mostly because of Chappie the Robot. And I gotta say though, I, I thought Chappie the Robot was actually pretty cute at first, because I really did enjoy Sherto Copley's uh, role. I, I thought the voice sounded almost similar to... Uh, Johnny Five in uh, the movie Short Circuit, and I loved Short Circuit though because it got the idea of having to see a a robot with personality and be able to, to do all this other stuff by you know, by getting input. Yeah, and I thought that was cool, but unfortunately, the the movie just seems you know it seems to go on too long and. It, and the whole thing was just ridiculous involving the gangsters. You know, I, I gotta say, um, I know who the, those rap group were because I have seen their videos, but I had to say, um, I, I can tolerate uh, Yolanti because I think she was okay. I didn't like Ninja in the movie. I thought he actually acted like a complete bastard. And he was really bad too. And, and I don't mean bad in a good way, like badass or anything. He was just... He was a dick, and and that was the problem. And also, um, America, you know, he was, you know, there were times when I I try to like the guy, but he was just, he was just annoying. And I don't know. And I know when they went inside the hideout, they actually uh, had a lot of graffiti around too. And I know there was a 
one memorable scene where Chappie was actually turning on the TV and he was watching a uh, He-Man in the Masters of the Universe, the, the original cartoon from the 80s. And I know, I thought that was really clever that they showed that, but that was in the ads in the movie. And, um, and of course, you know, they, you know, the two group is actually wearing all their shirts, you know, with all these designs that they had. Yeah, even one of them actually said the word die into wood and and even Yolanti was wearing the chappy shirt as well. So yeah, they're all dressed up yeah, with that kind of fashion. With all the designs and including all these bling bling jewelry and all this other stuff too. I mean yeah, they even dressed the chappy up like that too. And yeah, I, I mean come on. I mean what's what's up all with all this gangster crap? That they put into it. I mean, it just doesn't work. Not at all. That's how stupid it is. They just started throwing all, all their songs um, into the soundtrack. You know, and and I, I guess there are some songs that were okay, but it, it just didn't do it for me. But, yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, Dave Patel, um, he was okay in the film. I'll give you that. Um, I, at least he was playing... You know, a, a young inventor who, who actually wants to uh, to actually use the robot to have all the artificial intelligence, you know, giving him a chance to, to fix all this mess that's been going around. Yeah. But, you know, it's... it's <laughs> you know, it, you know it's, it's always great to have a young inventor do all this stuff, you know, to help out. I mean, basically, he's, he's just uh, <laughs> an answer to... Um, to Ben in the movie Short Circuit, yeah, who of course was played by Fisher Stevens. I, however, uh, yeah, Hugh Jackman played a, a complete asshole in the film. Yeah, definitely a, a character that you really would like to hate, named Vincent Moore. Yeah, he he, he was a complete dick. Um, I mean, I love Hugh Jackman as an actor because he's always been good as playing Wilbur Ween and and all those other films that he's been doing, but. This one, of course, he just really plays an asshole. I, mean, I, I didn't like him. So Gordy Reaver, of course, just you know, cashing in for a paycheck as usual. You know, just playing a uh, a thankless role as as the CEO for the company called Tichaba. Uh There wasn't anything interesting about this movie at all. It just it seems, seems to go long. You know, lots of um, strong violence that they put in the film. I mean, yes, they had a lot of that. And a lot, a lot of gangster bullshit that I don't give a crap about. I, you know, it, was, it wasn't interesting at all. I, I, it's like they really want you to think that, that the gangsters themselves are the heroes of the film. I mean, it just doesn't work at all. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's stupid, dumb, pointless. It's such a shame, too, because it was written and directed by Neil Bonkamp, who is best known for his uh, brilliant science fiction film called District 9, and then he later went on to do the film Elysium, which I think it was very underrated when it came out in 2013. Yeah, I mean, those, those were um, two great films. I mean, it makes you wonder, what was it like, you know, when you actually uh, live in a in a futuristic world called Johansenburg, South Africa, you know, involving the story which focused on aliens. You know, and they had a ship on top, and and they're actually, you know, living on the grounds, trying to find all the stuff they need so they can get back home. Yeah, and and, and of course, they it also mixes in with a documentary because I guess he loves to throw this in. And Elysium was was quite different because it focuses more on cancer and all that. Yeah. I mean, they're both intriguing films. This is just garbage. That's all it really is. It's just garbage. They only had one intriguing scene involving the robot, but then it just keeps going on and on and on and on. I mean, what's the point anymore? <laughs> no. It's just dumb. Now I'm really curious about this because I never know what it's going to be like once uh, Neil Bonkamp wants up being assigned as a director for an, an upcoming film for Alien, which is going to be sort of a follow-up to the first two films, you know, Alien and Aliens, and they'll try to destroy the plot involving Alien Free and Alien Resurrection. 
So hopefully, who knows what that's going to happen. But this movie was just oh, forgettable. That's all it is. It's it's forgettable. Not worth your time. Um, it, it, it's like a cross between short circuit means uh, gangster rap. It doesn't work at all. I did not like Chappie. I think it's a very bad film. Not worth your time. You'd just be better off watching something else. So anyway, I give Chappie one star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.